times his preparation for bodybuilding competitions enhances his dates. And he admits that uh, nice calves on a woman are more important than a nice figure. Please welcome Philip Cohen. Well, tell me about the calves. What kind of calves do you like? I love calves uh, like diamonds. They really be sharp, four points, and um, very hard. I think you can tell a lot about a calves. Usually with nice calves, you really get nice legs. Well, now, does a woman have to be a bodybuilder to have calves like that, or do they just kind of come on normally? No, the many times wearing heels will bring it on. Um, wearing heels brings a lot of things. Wearing heels definitely brings, <laughs> brings it on. Uh, calves are, are the first thing I look at, though, because usually you can tell out about how the legs and how everything above that's going to go just by how the calves are. How does preparing for a bodybuilding competition enhance a date? Because I've, I've talked to these guys, and they starve themselves, and they're in a terrible mood, and all kinds of, they go through all kinds of things to get ready for these. Well, dieting is very difficult, and you usually have to take your food with you everywhere you go. And a lot of women are very conscious about what they eat when they go out to dinner, and they might not want to eat too much because they, they're either dieting or they like to watch what they eat. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot easier if you're both watching what you eat, and if you're both miserable together, then it's not so bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the women that Philip had to choose from. Now, remember, you're going to pick the woman you think's best for him. Here we go. First, there's Angela. She enjoys reading poetry and singing. She thinks that the best way to catch a man's attention is to face a, uh, or to fake a British accent. And she says that the fastest way for a man to lose her attention is to have a southern accent. Here's more on that. A southern accent, for some reason, just reminds me of a old hick somewhere out in the back barn. A piece of hay in his mouth and just, no, nothing worse. I mean, you can see this great-looking guy. He's everything you've been looking for. And he opens his mouth and he's got this southern accent. And it just blows her. All right, next there's Debbie. She says that men with big noses need not to ask her out because uh, she'll just turn them down. She loves to laugh, but she admits that sometimes she laughs at all the wrong times. Here's an example. Sometimes, you know, you get to the tense moment of the date. He's bringing you home, you know, and he's, he's wanting to give you a kiss and a hug goodnight, you know, and I, I start laughing, and he's like, oh, what did I do? Is she laughing at me? And I'll just have to look at him, and I, I can't help it. It's just I start laughing, or right in the middle of the kiss, I start laughing. <laughs> Finally, Larissa, she claims that she's a good catch because she has cute dimples and a lot of class. She admits that when she's on a date, she often chatters on about nothing, and she told us her biggest pet peeve with men. I hate it when guys just walk up to me and go, smile. Do they walk around smiling? I mean, this is, I mean, I think it's a little bit ridiculous. It's just like women are supposed to sit there on a stool and smile. Not that, I, you know, maybe I didn't want to smile at them because I don't like them. <laughs> Those are the three women Philip had to choose from. Time for you to vote. Who do you think would be the best lady for him? We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll meet the woman that Philip selected. We're going to hear everything that happened on their date. We'll do that in two and two. Be right back. What do you... swept to one side. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> nice to see you. Make yourself at home back there and tell me about the day, Philip. Well, I get to the door and uh, I brought Angela Rose and she opened the door and she says, um, are you Philip? And I sort of thought that was strange. I was, you know, just for our date, as we had said, and I had a rose. How come you weren't room. sure? Well, Chuck, he told me that he looked like, uh, in his description, that he looked like Jim McMahon. And as you can see, I don't think he looks like Jim McMahon, do you? Um, I looked through the people, and this he just did not fit his description. He also told me he was a bodybuilder, and I expected this great, big, buff kind of man. And, and he, he, no, there, I didn't see anything buff about him. <laughs> well, Chuck, unfortunately, I saw too much buff on her. She was wearing a... Uh, oh. She was wearing a, a very short, uh, frilly dress which you know, we, we had planned to it's go. It's not a dress in it, and it wasn't short. Okay, well, it was short on you. Uh, oh. uh, we planned to go We planned to go horseback riding. I, was very, I didn't know why she was wearing this type of outfit to go horseback riding. And, you know, she's a beautiful face, as you can see. Unfortunately, I didn't see the bottom of her on the video. And that's, you know, she... Well, we can all see the bottom and the top of you, and I didn't think either part was that great. <laughs> 
Well, then you finally got the horseback riding. Though. Well, we started on our way up to the park to go horseback riding. By the time we get there, it was dark, and they had closed at dusk. And he so knew that, that. He knew that. that that's why we were supposed to be in a hurry, Angela. Well, well you didn't tell me that. How about the drive? Was things get a little better on the drive or not? <laughs> no, I suppose that should have been an indication. He had the stereo really loud, and he's playing this rap music, and I felt like I was in competition with it. And it, I don't really care for rap music, but it was so loud, I thought, well, it's either me or the stereo, and I truly didn't feel like shouting. And it, oh, it was also very cold in the car, and I asked him, I don't know if he didn't hear me, I don't know if you heard me or not, Philip, several times I'd made hints that it was cold, I mean, I was goosebumped everywhere, and he didn't offer to turn it down. All she had to do Maybe. was, I mean, she's, you know, she's a grown woman, and uh, all oh. she had to do was, was ask me to turn the heat on. I she, said in her, she said in her video something which I really liked that she had said that, you know, she really, if something was going the way she didn't like it, that she would say so and she would I, ask if you changed. I did, I asked you, see, you must have a hearing problem. Well, evidently, you, there, you all both had a communication problem of some kind here, but did you, you didn't go horseback riding. What did you finally so do? So we didn't go horseback riding. We got a... I decided that we go, we both decided, she said that she'd never been to the laser show there at the top of the observatory, so we decided to go there. So we started to trek our way up the top of the mountain, and I wasn't really sure about how to get up there, so I stopped and asked uh, someone on the road you for directions. You stopped direction. and asked after several, uh, a drive out to the back side of the mountain. I stopped and asked someone for directions, and the person I stopped and asked spoke French. And I do not. <laughs> well, did you make it up there finally? Yeah, we got up there and we went to get tickets for the show, and they were sold out at seven for the seven thirty show. It was about it was about quarter. That was forty five minutes later, Chuck. <laughs> this thing is a disaster. I mean, you can't go horseback riding. The laser show is sold out. So well, no, what happened? Well, we got tickets for the like the ten thirty show, and I'm thinking, oh, geez, I got to spend five more hours with her. Oh, oh, thinking what I'm gonna do. Well, you could have definitely taken me home at that time. It would have been no problem well, why at all. Didn't you? I mean, first he had to play Mr. Macho, and and not you know after the first couple we were still lost and we still went around this circle again again around the mountain I'm thinking what is this guy doing well now well so now what happened did you go to the 10:30 show well we went yeah we had uh we had about four hours to kill and what did you I do mean, in four hours i mean kill yeah so kill. i figured angela enjoyed eating so i decided to uh to take her <laughs> down to you do, Philip. well how was dinner angela well he uh, he, I told him that I don't care for spicy food, uh -huh. and he chose a Thai restaurant. Maybe he doesn't understand that Thai is very spicy. Yeah, it can be. And I don't, I just don't care for spicy food, so th I thought the selection was terrible. <laughs> hey, let, me, let, me, let me get by this, okay, and let's go to the laser show. How, how long was the laser show, or how was it? Did you enjoy that, Angela? The laser show itself was wonderful. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's just that Philip tried to hold my hand and get close, and I thought, are you here? Do you see how badly this date is going? Why are you doing well, why this? Why did you do that? That's a good question. I, I thought I that he just ruined, he ruined the laser show by doing <laughs> Most that. Most guys, I have to say, so. I did not. <laughs> Philip says, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see who the audience is. <laughs> this is just a disaster. <laughs> Pick Larissa, 60 percent. Hey, Marjorie, if you want to go out and have Larissa, we'll be happy to pay for it. Maybe that's that. Well, I thought Angela was the best one out of the three, and obviously the best wasn't too good. So I think I'm going to stay on my own. Angela, I'm sorry well, things didn't work out. This just didn't work out for either one of you. That's great with me, and I think Larissa's a very lucky girl. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, and Philip, thank you. And uh, we'll be back with uh, another couple right after this. Stay with us.